Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. So back with another video. So this will be the third video that I will do on permutations. And in this video, I'm going to look into type two questions. So as you know that uh, my team and I have gone all over the have gone over all the past paper questions, and we've divided permutations into multiple categories and combinations into multiple categories. So this will be type two, which is permutation applied to objects. And here the condition is that uh, two or more objects or letters are together okay so that these are the kind of questions that we're going to be solving in this video now remember whenever you have a restriction as i said in the introductory video we always settle turns the restriction first or we always first make sure that the whatever the restriction is or whatever the condition is we first fulfill that and before we do anything else okay so here's a question we'll start off with some easy questions and then in between i will slip in some difficult questions so with every question i would encourage you if you know this concept or or if you're doing it for the first time then don't uh, i would encourage you to pause try it yourself and then let's see let's see if you get the correct answer or if you get the hang of it after let's say the first two or three questions then you know for the remaining questions because i'm going to be solving multiple questions for the remaining questions i'd encourage you to do that okay <clears throat> now so it says mary saves her digital images on her computer in three separate folders named family holiday and friends her family folder contains three images her holiday folder contains four images and her friends folder contains eight images okay fine in how many ways she can arrange these 15 images in a row across her computer screen if she keeps the images from each folder together okay so we're talking about how many images we're talking about 15 images now good idea would be to highlight the different categories along with their numbers so three her family folder has three images her friends her holiday folder has four images and her friends folder has eight images so all together there are 15 images okay so let's make 15 blanks one two three four five six seven now to save some time let's duplicate these so we have seven more it's kind of sad you can't do that on a piece of paper but i can't so i'm gonna make sure that i take full advantage of whatever tech that i can so <clears throat> Now, her family folder has three images. And remember, all these uh, different categories are to be kept together. OK, so what we're going to do is let's say that they're the three family pictures or that she's talking about. Let's call them F1, F2, F3. Now, because they're they're different pictures, so that means they can shuffle amongst themselves. And because there are three of them, so that means they can shuffle amongst themselves three factorial number of ways. OK, then we're talking about holiday images. So here are the four holiday images. And once again, you can you can call them H1, H2, H3, H4. And since these are four different images, that means these can shuffle four factorial number of ways. OK, now what we are left with, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So these are eight images which are basically in the folder uh friends so these can shuffle how many ways these can shuffle eight factorial number of ways whoops sorry about that okay now then the question says that these 15 images in a row across a computer screen if she keeps images from each folder together now there's no condition as to how the images should be whether she should have friends first then holiday and then family so that means these are now three different units if you remember from the introductory clause from the introductory video whenever you have certain number of objects that are to be kept together so the objects that are together is just treated as one unit and then you have the remaining objects so here we have three different units which means that they can also shuffle amongst themselves and how many ways can they shuffle they can shuffle three factorial number of ways okay just like how you would arrange three different objects in a straight line here also you're doing the exact same thing so the answer of this is going to be i've already worked it out it's going to be 34 million eight hundred and thirty six six thousand four hundred and eighty and don't freak out that is the correct answer okay so that was one question let's uh, do more questions so here we have another question it says seven friends together with their respective partners all meet up for a meal to commemorate the occasion they arrange for a photograph to be taken of all 14 of them standing in a line okay so all together there are 14 people keep that in mind how many different arrangements are there if each friend is standing next to his or her partner. Okay, so that means now we have how many people? We have altogether 14 people. So let's start by making 14 blanks. Do keep in mind that I'm solving the first part now. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's duplicate these seven blanks. So we have 14 of them. Okay, now, so every friend is supposed to stand next to his or her partner. OK, so that means we will make blocks of two. So since two people are to be together, 
so they can shuffle amongst themselves two factorial number of ways sorry about that and then these two people so that's this this is another couple they can also shuffle amongst themselves two factorial number of ways and then same goes for these two so that's going to be two factorial and then i'll just make boxes first so here's one box here's another here's another and here's another and inside the box the couple can shuffle amongst themselves there's no restriction as to how they should stand together as long as they're standing together so this would be two factorial times two factorial times two factorial seven times so how about i just take two factorial and raise it to the power of seven i mean you can write down two factorial seven times and multiply it by each other but another thing to keep in mind is that these are seven different couples so that means as a couple, as a unit, they can shuffle amongst themselves. And how many couples are there? There are seven. So how, how do you arrange seven objects in a straight line? You do that by simply multiplying by seven. So if you work this out, let's see what we get. We get 64,005, no wait, 645,120. And as always, don't worry, this is the correct answer. Okay, now part two. Part two says, how many different arrangements are, are there if the seven friends all stand together and the seven partners all stand together? So that means now, let's assume that uh, we have uh, seven boys and seven girls. So the seven boys stand together or seven men stand together and the seven women stand together. Okay, so now, once again, we will make 14 blanks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's duplicate this. Here we go. So these seven people, they are supposed to stand together and then one, two, three, four. Okay, I think I messed it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so these seven people, they're supposed to stand together and then these seven people are supposed to stand together. Now these seven people can shuffle amongst themselves, obviously as long as they're standing together, it doesn't matter. So they can shuffle amongst themselves seven factorial number of ways and these seven partners can also shuffle amongst themselves seven factorial number of ways. And then as always, since these are two units, so these two units can be arranged two factorial number of ways, which will give us 50, uh, 508, no actually, 5,080,000, yes, 5,080,000. Actually, let's work it out to be on the safe side. So seven factorial times seven factorial into two. So that's 500, no wait, actually, that's, let me write down the correct answer. The correct answer is, I guess that's the rounded off answer. The correct answer is 508, zero three two double zero okay so this is fifty million eight hundred and three thousand two hundred okay so like i said don't freak out these are the correct answers i said in the beginning that uh, sometimes you will get some extremely large values so nothing to worry about okay now another question here it says, in a sweet shop, five identical packets of toffees, four identical packets of fruit gums, and nine identical packets of chocolates are arranged on in a line on a shelf. Find the number of different arrangements of the packets that are possible if the packets of chocolate are kept together. Okay, so there's a lot of information in the question, so you've got to be able to remember to read it once and then read it again with the intention of extracting important information. So there are five identical packets of toffees, four identical packets of fruit gums, and nine identical. So the key word here is, if you think about it, the key word here is that they are all identical, okay? So when we're talking about people, even if let's say they're identical, they're still different, right? Even if they're identical twins, they're, they're still two different people, right? But when we're talking about objects or when we're talking about letters or numbers, then in that case, we have the in that case they can be identical okay just like what we have over here so all together let's see how many we have so 5 plus 4 is 13 13 plus 9 is 21 okay 5 plus 4 no actually 5 uh, 9 plus 4 is 13 and 13 plus 5 is 18 okay my addition is uh, has just has been messed up lately so let's start by making 18 blanks okay so that's going to take a while one two three four five six seven eight nine but i can always use tech to my advantage so let's make nine and then let's duplicate them okay now the 
important part is the restriction is that the nine identical chocolates are to be together okay so the nine identical chocolates that means one two three four five six seven eight nine so if they are to be together and because they're identical that would be nine factorial divided by nine factorial okay so nine because they're nine so nine factorial and divide by nine factorial because they're identical okay so this is what's going inside the box nine factorial divided by nine factorial okay now let's see what's going on outside the box so outside the box let's see how many we have so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so we have ten different units okay so how do you arrange 10 different units in a straight line? That's 10 factorial, okay? But don't forget that the four packets of fruit gums are identical. So that means you have to divide by four factorial. And the five packets of toffees are also identical. So you have to divide by five factorial as well. So when you work this out, and if you do it correctly, you get one, two, six, zero as the correct answer, all right? So I hope you're following and I hope you're understanding these questions. Now let's do another question which is once again very similar to uh, the question that I have solved above and here I would encourage you to pause this video try this question yourself so it says four families go to a theme park together Mr. and Mrs. Lynn take their two children Mr. O'Connor takes his two children Mr. and Mrs. Emmett take their three children Mrs. Burton takes her son the 14 people all go through a turnstile one at a time to enter the theme park okay Find how many different orders if 14 people go through given that each family stays together. Okay, so each family has to stay together. All right, now how many people are we talking about? We're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. All right, so let's first place each family in the order that it's given in the question. Okay. So Mr. and Mrs. Lynn take their two children. So this is a family of four. One, two, three, four. So they have to be together, but they can shuffle amongst themselves, obviously. And how can they do that? They can do that four factorial number of ways, since there are four different people. So that would be four factorial. Okay. Then let's talk about Mr. O'Connor's family who has uh, who takes his two children. So this is a family of three. That means they can shuffle amongst themselves three factorial number of ways. Okay. Then let's talk about Mr. and Mrs. Emmett who take their three children. So this is a family of five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. There you go. And they can shuffle amongst themselves five factorial. And then Mrs. Burton with her son. So that's a family of two. And that means they can shuffle amongst themselves two factorial number of ways. So that would be four factorial into three factorial into five factorial into two factorial. And then do not forget, I'm afraid a lot of students would just leave it here, but do not forget that these are four different families. So here's family one. Here's family two and here's family three and here's family four. Now, the only condition is that the families must go through together. Okay. Doesn't matter the order in which the families go together. Okay. Or it doesn't matter the, the order of the families also doesn't matter. So how do I take into account how many different ways these families together can go through the can enter the park so because there are four different units so these four different units can be arranged for factorial number of ways and if you work this out you get 829,440 as the correct answer okay now here's another question let's see what this says the back row of a cinema has 12 seats all of which are empty a group of eight people including mary and francis sit in this row Find the number of diff find the number of different ways they can sit in these twelve seats if all eight people sit together with no empty seats between them. Okay, so that means they're going to sit together, and then there will be empty seats. Okay, so that's how this works. That's one way, or there can be one empty seat and then the eight people sitting together. And how many seats are there? There are twelve seats. That means then they will have three different empty seats. Okay, so how does this work? Let's have a look. So all together, there are 12 seats. So let's start by making 12 blanks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now let's duplicate these six blanks. So we have 12 of them. All right, now, so we have to make sure that the eight people sit together. So that means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight. Yeah. So now we're left with four empty seats. Now, because there are eight people and there are eight different people, so they can obviously shuffle amongst themselves eight factorial number of ways. Okay. Now, you would think that we are going to do one into two, uh, three, four, five. Now, <clears throat> at this point, you would think that we're going to do eight factorial into five factorial. Now, that's wrong. Why? Because this five factorial is assuming that we have one, two, three, four, five, five different units. But if you think about it, these seats are empty and every empty seat is identical. So that means if we do eight factorial into five factorial, what we have done is we have basically considered the number of ways the four empty seats can also be arranged. But if the seats are empty, that means there is no other way that you can arrange them. So if you've done this, that's fine. But just remember to divide by four factorial. Why? Because like I said, that these four empty seats are basically identical. Okay, so this is now going to be eight factorial into five factorial divided by four factorial or simply eight factorial into five. Okay, now let me show you in detail how this works. And this turns out to be 201,600. Okay, now here's how this works and make sure that you're paying close attention. So let's duplicate this. Now one arrangement is the one that we saw here. Okay, so this is one arrangement. Now, the reason why we're multiplying by five, okay, and the reason why I've written it separately so that you can see how we have to multiply it by five or what are the five different arrangements. So in one arrangement, we saw that we have the eight people sitting together and then we have the remaining four empty seats. But there, there's, no, there's no restriction that the eight people should come first and then you should have all the empty seats. So that means here is another possibility that you have an empty seat and then you have the eight people sitting together who can shuffle amongst themselves, eight factorial number of ways, and then the remaining three people. And then there is also, po it's, it's also possible, and I'm sure you can probably see where this is going, that you first have two empty seats. Okay, so let me drag two empty seats here. And then you have the eight people sitting together. Okay, so this is the third possibility. And then here only, I'll show you the fourth possibility. Or in fact, you know what, let's just do it separately. Oops. Let's duplicate this. So the fourth possibility is going to be that you first have the three empty seats, and then you have the eight people sitting together. And then there is a fifth possibility, which is that you first have all the empty seats, and then you have the eight people sitting together. So in all these ways, in all these five different ways, you have the eight people sitting together, which is why we actually end up multiplying it by five. So you can see here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, here's five, okay? And this is the problem. If you, if you multiply it just by five factorial and leave it there, so that means you've considered every empty seat to be different from the other, which it's not. Like for example, if let's say I swap this empty seat with this one can you see the difference no you can't why because they're empty they look they look all they all look identical so that's the reason all right now here's another question let's see what this one says a shop has seven different mountain bicycles five different racing bicycles and eight different ordinary bicycles on display a club selects six of these 20 bicycles to display okay now remember uh, i have taken specific questions so a lot of the information that you will find in the question may be irrelevant for that for this specific part that i'm solving so this question for example says how many different arrangements are there in the cycle rack if the mountain bikes are together okay and how many mountain bikes do we have we have three mountain bikes one racing bike and two ordinary bicycles okay so we have to arrange the six that have already been selected okay so coming back to the question how many different arrangements are there in the cycle rack if the mountain bicycles are together with no spaces between them the ordinary bicycles are both together with no spaces between them and the spaces are all together okay so the spaces also have to be together not like the question here where you could have like two spaces then the eight people and then two another spaces okay okay now remember that you have how many empty spaces you have 10 empty spaces so let's start by making 10 different blanks one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay now let's uh, let's one by one start placing the different types of bikes so we first have to keep the mountain bicycles together so we have three mountain bicycles let's try and do a better job okay one Trying to make a rectangle here. All right, thank you. So that would be three factorial. 
Okay, and then we have one racing bike. So, well, we can make a box, but it's really not necessary. But let's do it anyway. So let's call it one factorial, although it makes no difference. And then after that, we have two ordinary bikes. So let's put them together in a box also. And since there are two, that means they can shuffle amongst themselves two factorial number of ways. Okay, and then we have the four empty spaces, okay? Now, the empty spaces can't really shuffle amongst themselves for the reason we saw above, because they're all identical. So even if, let's say, you do four factorial, and after that, if you realize, well, they're all identical, you can divide by four factorial, which basically is equal to one, or, you know, not, uh, might as well not do it at all. Okay, so what do we have? Let's see. So here's what we have. We have three factorial multiplied by one factorial, multiplied by one factorial, multiplied by two factorial. And then do not forget, do not forget that we can shuffle these four units. Okay. As long as every unit is together, which includes the ordinary bikes, the racing bike, the mountain bikes, and the empty spaces, they can shuffle. Okay given that all the empty spaces are together okay so not like the previous question where the empty spaces could be in between uh, where the empty spaces could be on both sides of the people sitting together here the empty spaces wherever they go they will go together as one unit so that means we have four different units that we have to arrange which can be done four factorial number of ways and if you work this out let's see what do we get so three factorial into two into four factorial which is equal to 288 ways all right so there you go that's the answer all right, so here's another question. Let's see what this says. Find the number of different ways in which all eight letters of the word Tazania can be arranged so that all the letters A are together. All right, so the condition is that all the A's are to be together. Now, since we have eight letters, let's start by making eight blanks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now the only condition is that you have to keep the A's together. So how can we do that? Well, A, A, A. A. So now we have all the A's together. Now, normally at this point, when we are dealing with different objects, we consider how many ways they can shuffle amongst themselves. But because there are three letters and they're both the same, so there's no reason for us to consider that. Even if we do, the way that we would do that would be three factorial divided by three factorial, which is as good as one. Okay, this is the only condition. Now, this is going to be treated as one unit. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different units to be arranged. So we multiply it by six factorial. But remember, in the remaining six letters, we have N that occurs twice. And any other letter that occurs more than once? Nope, that's it. So it would be divided by two factorial because of the two ends that we have. So 6 factorial, which is 720 divided by 2 factorial is equal to 360. And there you go. That's your answer. Okay. Now another question related to letters. Let's see what this brings to the table. Find the number of different ways that the 13 letters of the word accommodation can be arranged in a line if all the vowels A, I, O are next to each other. Okay. So we have to keep all the vowels together. So how many letters are we talking about? We're talking about 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's duplicate these six letters. So 6 and 6, that's 12. And we have one more. So that's 13. Okay. Now let's see. Let's let's put all the vowels in a box. So, or let's just write all the vowels first, starting with A. So you got to be extremely careful and be extremely patient here so that you don't end up missing a letter. Okay, so we have two A's. That's done. And then we have three O's. So let's cross them out. Whoops. One, two, three. Any other vowel? Yeah, we have an I. Okay, so let's put them in a box since they're supposed to be together. So we have six letters. And of the six, we have two A's. So we'll divide by two factorial. And we have three O's. So we'll divide by three factorial. So these are the number of A's. These vowels together can be arranged. Now we multiply by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we multiply by eight factorial. And what are we divided by? Well, don't forget the other letters other than the vowels that are repeating. Okay, so I'll use a different color for that. We can see that we have C that occurs twice. So we'll divide by two factorial. And we have M that occurs twice. Okay, since I've already dealt with I, I can cross that, that out. And the other letters, D, T, and N, they just occur once. So that means we have to divide by two factorial for the two C's, and we have to divide by two factorial for the two M's. All right, so let's work this out. If you work this out, and if you work it out correctly, you get 604,800 as your answer.
Okay, so here's another question, and the reason why I want to solve this question. The reason what makes this question different, let's let's find out first. And uh, okay, so here's another question. Let's see what this says. How many different arrangements are there of the eight letters in the word released in which the letters LED appear together in that order? Okay, so you can see what the difference is. The letters LED not only are to appear together, but they also appear, they should also appear together in that order. In the previous question where we had to keep the vowels and the consonants together, there was no restriction of the order, but here there is a restriction of the order. So let's start by making eight spaces. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the letters that are to be together, L, E, D. Let's put them in a box. There we go. Now, normally at this point, we would do three factorial so that these three letters, the way that they can shuffle amongst themselves can be considered. But here, we're not gonna do that. And the reason is because they are to be together in this order only. Okay, so that means there's only one way in which they can be arranged and that's L, E, D, and that's it. Okay, now with these three letters gone, Let's look at the remaining number of letters. And the remaining number of letters, let's cross out L, E, D. So the remaining number of letters are five, and now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different units to arrange. So that would be six factorial. Now in these six letters, in these six units, there are two E's. So that means we also have to divide it by two factorial because the number of letters that are repeated, we divide it by the number of factorial of the number of times that they are repeated. So six factorial is 720 and uh, 720 divided by two is 360. And that's the answer to this question. And I hope you can see how this question is different from the previous one. So just make sure that you're reading this question carefully and you get the restriction that the question has given exactly right before you start solving it. Okay, now, find the number of different ways all 10 letters of the word Copenhagen can be arranged so that the vowels A, E, O are together and the consonants C, G, okay. Well, basically the letters that aren't vowels are consonants. So they're probably mentioned for the students who don't know. So you have 10 letters, one, two, three, four, five. Let's duplicate these five blocks. So we now have 10, there we go. Okay, let's put all the vowels in a box because they're supposed to be together. So we have O, we have, let's cross out as I write them. We have one, two, we have two E's. There you go, and we have one A. Okay, let me make sure of that. We have two E's, we have three E's actually, Copen. Yeah, we have, no wait, we have two E's. Where did the third E come from? Okay, we have, one O, two E's, and one A. Okay, yeah, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay. So these four can shuffle amongst themselves, obviously. So that can be done four factorial. And because we have two E's, divide by two factorial. And don't forget that the consonants are to be together also. So we're talking about C, we're talking about P, we're talking about N, we're talking about H, G, and N. Okay, they're supposed to be together as well. And how many are, uh, how many letters do we have? We have six, six factorial, but they're not all different. N is, N occurs twice, so we have to divide by two factorial as well. And the question also, do, also doesn't specify whether you should have vowels first and then consonants. So that means both are acceptable. And we have two different units to arrange, so we'll multiply it by two factorial. Okay, so let's see what do we get. 4 factorial into 6 factorial. Now remember that 2 factorial is simply as good as 2, so you don't have to type factorial again and again every time you have to. Multiply or divide by 2 factorial. So into 2, divide by 2, divide by 2 again. So we get 8,640. And there you go. That's the answer. Okay, now I believe this is the second last question. Let's see what it says. In an orchestra, there are 11 violinists, five cellists, I hope that's how you pronounce it, and four double bass players. A small group of six musicians is to be tested from these 20. The small group that is selected contains four violinists, one cellist, and one double bass player. Okay, so remember I said that I've only taken out parts that fit the description of type two. So we have four violinists, one cellist, and one double bass player. They are six people. They sit in a line to perform a concert. How many different arrangements are there of these six musicians if the violinist must sit together? So we've done questions like these, and I think you guys should be able to solve this question comfortably. So we start by making one, two, three, four, five, six. Six blanks. Let's uh, make the four violinists sit together. 
and they can do that. They can shuffle amongst themselves four factorial number of ways because they're four different people. Okay, and then we have one, two, three, three completely unique units to arrange, to shuffle, so which can be done three factorial number of ways. So four factorial into three factorial, that's equal to 144. Okay, now this is my favorite question. And that's the reason why I've left it for the very last question. So it says here, a group of 15 people visit an adventure park. The group consists of four families, Mr. and Mrs. Kenny and their four children, Mr. and Mrs. Lizo and their three children, Mrs. Martin and her child, Mr. and Mrs. Nantes. The group travel to the park in three cars, one containing six people, one containing five, one containing four people. These cars are driven by so-and-so people. The group enter the park by walking through a gate one at a time. Okay. In how many different orders can the 15 friends go through the gate if Mr. Lizo goes first and each family stays together? Okay. Now, each family stays together. You might think that's the condition, but that's not the condition. We also have to consider the fact that Mr. Lizo goes first. Now, think of it this way. If each family is to stay together and Mr. Lizo goes first, that means whose family should follow? Mr. Lizo? Obviously, Mr. Lizo's family, okay? So while you might think that the only condition in this question that each family is to be together, that's not true. The condition is that Mr. Lizo, since he has gone first, so his family has to go first, and then the remaining families, how many families do we have? Remaining three families can obviously shuffle amongst themselves, okay? So let's see, how many people do we have? We have 15 people. So let's start by making 15 different uh, blanks well 15 blanks basically one two three four five six seven let's duplicate these seven blanks so we have seven more that's a total of 14 and then let's make one more okay now now mr lizo has already entered so that means since he has already entered he's just one person okay so there's only one way mr lizo can enter and now the his family which by the way is a family of, let's see, is a family of one, two, three, four, five. It's a family of five. Okay, by the way, this question is not typed correctly. This is us. So here's one family. Here's the second family. Here's the third family. Here's the fourth family. Okay, so I apologize for the confusion. So since Mr. Lizo has entered, so that means the remaining four people, one, two, three, four, well, whatever they do, they will enter first, but they can shuffle amongst themselves, right? So let me make a nice rectangle. One, two, three, four. Okay, so these four people, the remaining four members of Mr. Lizo's family can shuffle amongst themselves, but the people that will follow Mr. Lizo must be from his family, okay? So after that, Mr. Lizo's family has entered the park, okay? So his wife and his three children have entered the park and four factorial because they can shuffle amongst themselves, okay? Then we have, okay, now let's say that since we've already dealt with this family, then let's start placing other families, okay? So let's talk about, let's, uh, let's talk about the second family, which is Mr. and Mrs. Kenny and their four children. Now you can change the order of the families, but because in the end we have to shuffle them anyway, okay? So the second family, as per my order that's going to enter the park is basically so this was the first family i'll number them and this is the second family so that's mr and mrs kenny and their four children so that's a family of six one two three four five six okay so this family of six can shuffle amongst themselves six factorial number of ways okay then we have mrs martin and her child so that's a family of two Okay, and they can also shuffle amongst themselves two factorial number of ways. That means it's either Mrs. Martin that can enter first or her child or the other way around. All right, so as per my uh, numbering, this is the third family. And then the fourth family is basically Mr. and Mrs. Nantes. And they're, since they're a family of two, that means they can also shuffle amongst themselves two factorial number of ways. So that's four factorial into six factorial into two factorial into two factorial. But here's the thing. These three families can shuffle amongst themselves, okay? We can't make all the four families shuffle amongst themselves because since Mr. Lizo has already entered, his family must enter first. So how do I shuffle three different units? We do so by multiplying by three factorial, okay? So if you do this correctly, you will get 414,720, which is the correct answer. And there you go.
that is the end of all the questions which I planned to solve with you guys today. So I hope you guys after this video have gotten a good grip on type two, which is where the position of two or more people or objects, letters, whatever uh, is fixed. Uh, no, wait, that's not, that was type one. Type two, I still haven't been able to memorize them myself. Type two is when uh, two or more people or objects or letters are to be together, okay? So I hope you've gotten a good grip on it. I encourage you guys to try out the remaining questions. And in the next video, we will discuss type three. So I'll see you then. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.